Uh, last week we had a school board meeting, a very good school board meeting, um, and we did make some decisions about reopening. One of those decisions was the uh, need to release Edgemont and Jeter um, a half a day on Friday afternoon so those individuals, uh, teachers, could have time to plan for both virtual learning and in-person learning. Uh, we also mentioned um, at that meeting that we were continuing to monitor the health care data in this community and try to make some decisions that are appropriate. One of those decisions that I did ask to speak about tonight was the face covering plan and also about our current health care plan. So I can start with either one, Madam Chair. You just let me know how you'd like me to begin. Okay, okay. So I'd just like to start by talking about COVID-19 in general, and it's an ever-evolving situation as we all know. Um, today, the Roanoke Times has reported that there's been an increase in the state of Virginia or maybe, uh, by 937 from Saturday's report. Um, there's a hundred and some th confirmed cases and s about 4,000 probable cases. So the numbers continue to, to rise. And what we want to do in Covington City Schools, should we open with our hybrid plan on September the 9th, is we want to make everyone safe and um, healthy. We do not want to have any outbreaks like are happening across the country uh, when schools have reopened with no good health care plan. So one health care mitigation strategy that I think is very important to talk about tonight is our face covering. Uh, our current health plan that was presented on July 21st has this process in it that it's mandatory that students and staff must wear face covering or shields and these are the bullet points when the six foot social distancing is not possible in the classrooms when on school buses at all times entering and exiting the building when traveling to different parts of the school buildings, when staff and students are in communal areas of the buildings, and when staff interactions with students, both must wear and if less than six foot apart. So that was what was in our health plan. Um, uh, if I did not make that clear, I'd like to make it very clear now. But there has been concern from both staff and students um, and families about our current uh, health care face covering mitigation strategy. So we took a staff survey and our staff survey did have two options, well actually five options presented to our staff. But the options as of today, uh, we had 121 responses and 94.2 of our staff, 114 responses, said they were okay with wearing a face covering. 43% of our staff members, and that's 52 responses, said that they were in favor of option one, which was proposed on the a survey as mandatory measures remain in place as stated above but allowances removal of the face covering may be allowed when students and staff are seated in classrooms when eating when in outdoor activities and social distancing is maintained. 34 percent of our respondents said that uh, and that was 42 individuals said they would prefer if we wore it all day long. Masks were worn all day long. And then about 18 responses, which is 14.9%, staff and students should be allowed to choose whether they wear a face covering or not. So, I asked permission last week if we could have a, a task force, and we did have a task force on Friday, and uh, I'd like to just talk a little bit about what was kind of the outcome of that meeting. Uh, we had some staff members present, some families present. We had some staff who are also family members. We had some staff present are, are on the task force that are grandparents. Uh, all across the board. And the consensus of that meeting was that, uh, in my opinion, is that everyone felt that space coverings were important. Most of the majority consensus was that face coverings should be man mandatory at all times. Some of them also felt very strongly that we should go with option one, which is just at certain times of the day. But after reading much data and hearing the Academy of 
uh, pediatrics speak to our school nurses across the state of Virginia last Thursday and reading the VDH news, the CDC news, and all the news that we continue to hear in this ever-evolving situation is my recommendation tonight, and this is what I told the committee when that meeting ended, that I feel as a school superintendent that um, face coverings should be mandatory at all times. Uh, from pre-K through grade 12, those face coverings should be uh, mandatory. Uh, children are often asymptomatic in how they display characteristics of uh, the infection and they could be passing that along to others. Families might have mixed feelings about their children wearing face coverings and wondering if their child should be exempt. But I believe strongly that we need to do everything in our power in Covington City Schools to make everyone safe and healthy. That my recommendation is that face coverings become mandatory all through the school day from the time they get on the school bus to they leave the building in the classrooms and that we practice that good health mitigation strategy so that everyone is uh, safe in Covington City Schools. I have put a draft uh, in front of you that was written with some support from members of that task force and um, Miss Sally Wolf, our school nurse, is on the phone and myself have read that and we all believe that this is a good policy for Covington City Schools to adopt. This does change from what we had originally said back on July 21st, but the data continues to change. The data continues to say that we must stop this, uh, this pandemic if we can. We have been lucky in Covington to continue to have only 13 cases, and I think that's because we've been able to <coughs> practice good mitigation strategies Allegheny County is up one to 60, but our community has been very, very safe in what we have been able to do with the COVID-19 cases. We don't want any cases in Covington City Schools, and I think this is just another measure that will put in uh, to practice from day one a good, solid way to keep our students and staff safe. Um, Things change every day with COVID-19, and uh, I want to be on top of this from day one. Do not want to have an outbreak in our school division of staff or students, um, and I think this is a good measure to put in place. But I would like to have your thoughts and opinions and perhaps have a vote this evening about the policy uh, as we move forward towards September the 9th. Okay. So everyone has heard what um, Ms. Melinda has said. At this time, I just would like to give the board an opportunity to um, express your thoughts on what has been presented to the board. I, I know on July the 21st, when we presented our plan, um, Ms. Snead Johnson was very forthright in telling us that this was a fluid plan, a working plan, and that we had to be flexible. And tonight, like we all know, um, we have seen the increase in cases and things like that, which has caused us to revisit some things that we talked about on the 21st. So I would like to hear your thoughts. Well, we said in our reopening meeting, uh, or at least at different points in the conversation, I remember that enforcement of mask wearing was going to be difficult at best in some cases, depending upon the age group and that sort of thing. And it, it seems like this policy, uh, one of the first things that I noticed was it, it was a fair shift to there are no exceptions to this. I mean, Previously, we had entertained the notion that there may be some students, special needs or otherwise, that may have increased anxiety just from face coverings and the like. So how do we, if, if, if this is the way that we're going to move forward, how are we going to mitigate any behavioral problems that might pop up because of it? Well, 
Well, first of all, if this would pass, the policy would pass this evening, or whatever policy our board uh, chooses to go forward with, I would make a school messenger call to our families and explain this is how we're going with our face coverings. And I would ask those families that children might have anxiety to start wearing, practicing wearing a face covering right now, and if they don't have one, I'll pr provide them one. But I do think we heard our pre-K uh, assistant speak during that that meeting and she did say that it's something that I think children can be uh, made less anxious about if there's some work with families working with them before they actually step foot into the um, the buildings when I've gone out shopping this weekend I've seen mothers with children uh, three four years old with their face coverings on so I think the, the community uh, family members are more aware of making sure their children are safe I have seen some that look un younger than two that don't have on a face covering. Of course, that's not recommended, but as far as behavior, I do think that the principals will have to have a conversation with uh, families and perhaps put in their um, uh, code of conducts or their plans for the year that this is a new expectation and A, B, and C could happen if their uh, student re does not choose to wear a face covering, re removal from the class, warnings and then perhaps if they cannot comply at all the family might uh, be um, asked to consider virtual learning or told virtual learning is needed for their for their child this is not something that is um, easy to recommend it is something that I think more and more school divisions are recommending across the state and I think it'll just be a shift in policy for us I do think it's important for families to know that if our our staff is putting uh, their um, their health on the line to do in-person instruction. This is just one more step for the families to help us provide that opportunity for students to have in-person learning. And then if they choose that is not the correct route for their students, then we do have a virtual learning opportunity. So it would just be another work in progress for our school division, which has been what we've been experiencing since March. And it's a, just another way of a mitigation strategy to help keep us all safe and healthy. I don't want to be the one that has to tell a family that we've uh, there's been an exposure to COVID-19 because of our our school divisions policy so this is just an extra layer of support in my opinion. I hope I answered your question. Mm -hmm. so, so, I, 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 so thus far, because of the other survey, as far as virtual learning is concerned, you've prepared for the certain numbers that you have uh, that will attend in person, that will um, be all virtual. Um, with Because there's two sides to this. Yes, there are. Right? Yes. You have people that strongly believe it, and you have people that are strongly against it. Yes. You have people that believe it is a protective measure and that it works. However, they despise wearing a mask, and that's understandable. Um, but are you prepared for those people that don't agree with it to change from the in-person to virtual? That discussion, that's yes, that's a very good question. And actually, Dr. Furman and I had that question today. I think it's one one of our principals did oppose to Dr. Furman. And yes, we realize we may lose some uh, families to virtual learning because of this policy. Uh, we are prepared. We will probably could put a cutoff. We can't have uh, we can't prepare accurately for virtual learning if up to September 9th we allow families to continue. But if I make the school messenger call, this is the policy that we do adopt. We will probably do a cutoff day and say, families, if this is the route you choose, we need you to let us know by that day. I also am afraid that some families, because of the four and a half day that we have chosen, may also decide that that's not what's good for their family because of child care or whatever. Uh, I think everything we do a little bit differently, it's a domino effect. One thing makes something else happen, and we're just going to continue to have. But that's an excellent question. We, we are prepared for and that. We are in a position where it does not matter which decision we make at this point in time. 
you will not have 100% support or no. agreement. With no, you. sir. No. Um, so, and I know we all understand that. Um, and if you uh, follow any social media, you will understand that as well. People are very opinionated yes. about uh, the use of protective measures, uh, the purpose, whether it's it works or not, et cetera. So um, you're going to deal with some of that as well. Um, I liked, I really did like the option that allowed them to uh, social distance when um, that opportunity presented itself. Um, and then wear the mask in the hallways, transitioning to different areas, and when social distancing was not applicable. Um, because we do put a lot on these students' shoulders already, and adding another layer uh, is difficult. This time is already very stressful for them. Um, and I'm not advocating against the mask. Uh, I do realize its purpose. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep in mind um, these young, impressionable minds uh, as they go through this situation um, and have to not only deal with all the things they're dealing with mm -hmm. as teenagers mm -hmm. and uh, young juveniles, but then add this layer on top of it and then tell them, um, well, it's mandatory. Um, and I know some uh, jurisdictions and some schools are doing that, and I'm not opposed to it. I'm just concerned about yeah. the impact it has um, mentally, socially. socially. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's something to still keep in mind. Yes, it is. Um, so, I mean, that, and that's really all I have to say. I'm not taking you know a position one side or the other I'm just trying to point out some hey if we do this you might see this and mm -hmm. if we don't do this then you might see this yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and it's the same argument mm -hmm. that is going on everywhere yes. it's not just the schools mm -hmm. it's stores uh, other buildings private you know uh, businesses etc um, they have, are having to deal with the exact same thing but we have that caveat of these kids that we have to be concerned about how it's going to impact them as well. So uh, that's just my my main concern about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes any sense. Oh yeah, it, it, it does. So it does. You can see both sides of it. You can. Let me just let me interject this. I just want to mention something that Melinda said, and I definitely agree with Hubert. Um, these little impressionable kids. Um, we've been through so much since March. They are trying to process all of this. But it's something Melinda said. We are asking our staff to come back. And they have families as well. Um, they have children at home that if they contracted this, they could take it home. Mm -hmm. So it's not an easy decision by no means. Um, so I could advocate for both sides of it. Um, and you asked a question I thought about. Um, if we implement something like this, can we accommodate the numbers? Because some people are going to decide to go virtual. Do we have that capacity? This is something we're ready for. Well, on the other side of that, mm -hmm. we should be ready. Right. Because mm -hmm. what if the governor comes out and says again, we're all virtual again? Definitely. So right. we, we need to be at that ready spot already. But I think we've laid the groundwork for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. we, we discussed that. I was just saying you're planning on a certain number so teachers are thinking about this is how much time it's going to take to deal with the virtual students and make sure their needs are met but if then you increase it Definitely. if you double it then they've got to rethink their well, plan teachers, teachers will necessarily have more outreach time for the virtual learners the more learners in that pool the more time that they will have to dedicate mm -hmm. in in planning period type activities for reach for outreach and it, it, that's that's Same correct. That's roughly how it is. Yes, that's okay. correct. Yes. I did have a question. So if the masks were mandatory all day, 
how are we going to do lunches? They will be taken off for lunch. They will have to be taken off to eat. I mean, they're still yeah, going to go in yeah. The and, and if they go outside for recess and they can social distance, that after they get outside, they those masks can come can come off. And there may have to be what they call a, a mass break or a brain break, where you know you might have to take a moment uh, and let the children, if they're all socially distanced, sit it at their seat. The teacher feels that all is good. Um, she might say, "Let's take a break." Um, so, but I don't want that to be how we start out. But I do think if we start this way, this gives us more flexibility to see how the students do, and then uh, we're not going to totally back away from the policy but we do know that everyone needs to take a break from the um, from a mass at some point in time and we just have to monitor how that, that's done but that doesn't mean we can't uh, enact this policy if that's what your choice is this evening well, and a measuring stick for that what you said was about mass break if you rewind back to prior to uh, March and the career fields in which these individuals, employees, had to wear masks for their career, whether it was medical or whatever. Um, they did at some point in that day, in their work day or school day or what have you, had breaks. Um, so that would be a reasonable expectation mm -hmm. as well. Um, and you, you're going to have those that, uh, just like I said, it's happening everywhere if they don't wear it correctly or they're going to uh, oppose it, they're going to speak out, you know, so you, those are the kind of things we'll have to be yeah. prepared to handle if we go this route. Ms. Seek, I think you... I did. Um, Ms. Hunter said that the children would be eating in the cafeteria, but that's not so at the high school, correct? There's, there's some... Make a change, did we? There's uh, some going to some eating the cafeteria, but not all eating. And there's also going to be. Uh, I didn't hear her question, so I apologize, Ms. Zeke. There will be breakfast in the classrooms, grab and go breakfast in the classrooms at Edgemont and Jeter, um, and then there will be cafeteria eating uh, at Jeter Watson and Edgemont socially distanced. They are able to socially distance uh, the lunches, and so that there's only a certain number of kids, and they're six feet apart. At at the high school, there's still a work in progress. There will be some grab-and-go meals at breakfast time. There will be some grab-and-go meals at lunch time. And there will be some lunch in the cafeteria. Okay. Uh, so it, that's a work in progress as well. Um, so there, we're eating everywhere, basically, is what we're doing, okay. is eating everywhere. Backing up a little bit to the point I was making, I'll add to it. Um, my children are adults, um, so they can make decisions on their own. Um, and, and I have struggled with this since March because we've gone through so many different ways of different, you know, this is what you need to do, um, et cetera. And I struggle processing that as an adult, an experienced mm -hmm. adult. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how <laughs> these kids at different ages, um, because I don't have one in my home right now that I'm able to converse with to see how they're dealing, what they feel about mm -hmm. this. And so I just wonder how that third, yeah. fourth, fifth grader, because they have a different point of view mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. how the world appears right. to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then your your high school student, they're coming into their own, you know, mm -hmm. becoming young right. adults. Right. They're developing their mm -hmm. belief systems. Yeah. Um, and again, I know it's not just our problem. It, mm -hmm. it is it's, everywhere. It's Everybody everywhere. has to deal with it. It is it's everywhere. Um, but we end up with the responsibility of making that decision. It's a very difficult it, one. It is. It is. It is. I, I'm just going to, can I just tell you a little story that I've heard from our pre-K program. Uh, Ms. Morgan shared this with me and then also um, uh, one of the paraprofessionals in the pre-K program was on our task force. They, they've decided to, uh, this one teacher has purchased five different masks for each day of the week for every one of her students and is a different color every day. And 
they're going to be superheroes. So these pre-K students are going to be a superhero. Might be pink one day, maybe they're a pink Power Ranger, and they might be red another day, and I don't know who's red, maybe Spider-Man. But they're going to they're going to they're going to try to work it that way and teach mm -hmm. them. And they're also going to try to teach students respect for others. And this is one good way to teach children, small children, and even third and fourth and fifth graders that what they're doing by wearing a mask, they're respecting their teachers, they're respecting the individuals around them, the, the students, by trying to keep everyone safe and healthy. So we were going to go at, at that angle uh, as well as just respecting others. Uh, do your good deed, I guess, for the community. Do your good deed for your classroom. Wear your mask. Show people that you believe that this is a way we can make everyone safe in Covington City Schools. Can I make everyone believe that way? No. But I do think there are teachers that are already thinking about how can we do this if this is what it becomes in Covington well, City we're Schools. We're lucky to have a staff that's creative yeah, that's like that as well. So, you see, you had something else? I just wanted to say that I think that um, we don't want to sell children short either because at our task force meeting I forget which person said it but it, children don't like riding in a car seat and they learn right. and they don't like working walking I taught sixth grade one year at a county school and like my class had to walk on the third block from the wall to not bump the other side coming up the hall opposite us they learn to walk on the third block you know, children learn to stand in line and wait their turn to get their lunch. They learn how to ask for the lunch. I think children will do what we teach them, and when we reinforce it properly, they don't just roll models. You know, models. we don't make it a, a conflict situation. I think they'll all be fine. And I hope that's the case. I, I was well, and you always have one or two yeah. kids who don't want to do anything. You say that's just human nature, and and we're you know we're used to working with with a child who's just really for whatever reason is being oppositional. I mean, they could be afraid, they could not feel well that day, you know, we're used to that. Ms. Jones said at our, um, in a note to us, she wasn't able to attend, but she was uh, sent um, a nice write-up um, to our task force. And I think it was Ms. Jones who said that one of the things that this allows us to do is to teach children compassion for others. Am I right, Ms. Jones? Yes, and just for the record, my, my aunt died that day. I'm so sorry. I was sorry. with her. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. We, we didn't know why, but it was a really nice... You mean nice, to read it, what uh, you said? This, this is what Mrs. Uh, Jones allowed me to read to the task force that day. I think that taking the well-being of students, faculty, and staff into account, that the best decision is to require masks at all times, except for those that have medical, developmental, or emotional reasons not to do so. Taking care of others is an important lesson to teach children of all ages. We as adults must be willing to do all that we can to protect ourselves and others. And um, this was early in the morning and she had some family things going on that morning. So I did read it with her permission to our task force. I was going to say that again, um, and my point I was making, it's not that I'm siding with one where the other my concern is just how mm -hmm. they're going to process and deal with it you know um so I, I i want everybody to be safe i want to take the best measure possible um i do also want uh, and i go back to the two options the the one with the, the more flexibility seem to be more attainable easily for us to to meet that you know and not that that's the right one and we could probably do fine with option one if that's the way we go i i just didn't want to set ourselves up you know, I, that was my concern too um, i understand and, and Ms. zeke's point is well taken we do things they learn they do. Uh, from what they see you know mm -hmm. um that's a great point so and the only thing i want to say because what Ms. Um, zeke said was true um, it's all on how we present right. the information to kids, especially if you talk, you know, it's all on how we present it, the training that occurs, the innovation. Um, one thing that I recommend, I was thinking about this because I'm around kids all the time, you know, it's not just special ed kids that needs to get ready. 
and wear masks. We need to strongly encourage all families that have kids. Oh, to prepare their children. Yes, yes, to prepare their children. Right. I think that would be good well, if we choose to go this route. Yeah. Um, like one of the assumptions though was anyone with a severe medical condition that may affect breathing. How far are we going to go with that? I mean, if someone has asthma, I think I think if you continue reading the American Academy of um, Pediatrics says specifically asthma, allergies, and sinus, sinus, sorry, sinus infections are not a contraindication of using a face mask covering your mask. I think that there will be some asthmatics that may have significant issues, but I don't think that. I had a son with asthma. I think he could wear a mask if he was still in school right now. I think we'll just have to watch and monitor all of our students. I'm not a medical expert. Uh, we did have a staff member ask uh, Ann May what she thought about wearing face coverings. We have not heard from Dr. Ballou yet, but if Ms. Hale doesn't mind responding, she did speak to Ann May about wearing uh, face coverings. She is a, a pediatric family pra nurse practitioner. So Ms. Hale, do you mind me putting you on the spot? No, it's okay. Okay. Um, she did say that she was in support of it. The American Academy of Pediatrics has changed their stance just recently, and I have done a lot of research on the asthmatic piece of that. And actually, doctors feel that asthmatics, if they can, should wear one so that they don't contract this virus because if they do contract this virus, it can be significantly worse for them. So if at all possible, it would be case-by-case -case basis and a uh, school nurse would have to work with that child's physician to determine the best route for that child. I was going to say this is a res respiratory condition. And being an asthmatic my entire life, I don't want to be anywhere in a confined space with people without wearing one. I avoided our board meetings for two months for that very reason. I stayed in my home for two months. Um, it takes some getting used to, um, but I, my daughter, who is a nurse, has continually told me, we are never going to flatten the curve if we do not wear masks. And it's not because you are protecting yourself from getting it, you're protecting spreading it to others because you may be asymptomatic and not giving any indication that you're a carrier. And children are known to be those types of, mm -hmm. of carriers. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think that um, for me, that was my fear about going out was I knew how hard it is to breathe anyway and then to think about getting that condition on top of my asthma. Um, and I would venture to say that most asthmatics and parents of asthmatics would have that same feeling. Um, but you, you know, you take your inhaler, you, you do all sorts of things to avoid. When, when I was young, I had to wear a mask to, to brush my horse. I mean, and that was 70s, <laughs> you know, so. Um, I, I don't know. I think that, you know, and they have come back and reversed that. So, um, and that's the only reason I came out, because <laughs> I wear my mask. And, and I also know that the, another reason I somewhat changed my, um, my decision making process was because I'm also worried about the flu season and if you've heard anything about what they're anticipating with flu and COVID-19 we did have to shut down two days last year we probably should have shut down more but I held my uh, feet firm to the ground and probably shouldn't have but I am very worried about an early onset of flu and COVID-19 and would like to do everything possible. I think this is one way that possibly could help, but it is a tough decision to make. It's not one that I made easily. I did kind of change my thought process because I do think that this is one thing that we could do to make everyone safe. And I'm just going to, 
I'm just going to tell y'all a, a personal story, and you probably don't want to hear it. But my niece went to UNC Chapel Hill two weeks ago and went to a dorm to live, and now they're shutting down UNC because of the COVID-19 outbreak. And she, she doesn't know if she's going to get to stay. This is her first time away to college. We were all excited. And now because, and I know they're college students. They're not high school or elementary students, but because people wouldn't wear their mask now they might shut down that whole university because of some people that didn't and their case numbers have ridden, risen tremendously in two weeks at UNC Chapel Hill so it's happening everywhere you've seen the pictures of the Georgia high school where nobody had on a mask and then they've had so many outbreaks and of course we weren't going to be that kind of school division we were going to have a mask policy and we were going to socially distance but I think the socially distance plus this possible mandatory mask policy might make us as healthy as we can be in Covington can, City Schools. Can we compare and contrast, because my understanding of what we had in place already was that masks were going to be required on the buses and the hallways, and then I believe we either put down in print or it was agreed among the principals that once in the classroom, the teacher then had discretion about masks and that was to be enforced as classroom policy. And that was what was in the July 21st. Right. That was mm -hmm. that was exactly what we had uh, proposed. Do we anticipate a lot of extra chatter maybe? If, I mean, because we were just talking about, you know, mitigating circumstances, you know. Um, I'm not even sure about severe medical conditions. I mean, it sounds like that's going to be determined as we go. So whether it or and mask breaks, I mean, I'm I'm just worried that there will be some people under a mandatory policy. Um, if it's felt, if a, if a given teacher determines that hey, it looks like all of my students here need a break, you know, take take your mask off, cool off. Maybe it's a warm day. Uh, um, are they going to be breaking the very policy that we've set in place because we're we're making a blanket policy? I, I, I don't see it as a break in the policy. I just think it's common sense to, but that could be put in the policy that there could be mass breaks, but I don't know that that would Typically validate the whole process or we, invalidate. We as school board members try to take as light of a policy hand as we can as it impacts the actual classrooms. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of thinking of it, you know, another example of something that that we would do from a board level to tell teachers this is what you must do in your classroom there are those things for certain but um, it seemed to me that the policy that we had in place gave teachers the discretion to uh, you know whether it be they had a, a pre-existing health condition or whatever the case may be that that they could you know, tell the students hey while while you're in this classroom we're going to wear a mask. And, th and that could have been the case, but we also thought that would be what you said originally, hard to enforce and hard to make people realize we meant business by our policy. But Mrs. Zeke would... I was going to say that that um, it's always easier to lighten up than it is to tighten up. You know, um, people at this point have been calling, they've been messaging me, um, there have been discussions around um, with me as CEA that uh, even some of the folks who filled out the survey just a week ago or so with Miss Me Johnson have now been reading more reports, have seen the news change, and then truth you're afraid. And they also have felt that without a mandatory policy, it is harder to enforce. So if it's mandatory, it's easier to say as the teacher, the policy is we're all going to wear masks with the exception of those who have a note from their doctor or, or whatever wording we're going to use. Kids accept that. We are, they already accept children who have other medical disabilities or IEPs for learning needs and that kid gets up and leaves or whatever. Um, it, it also takes it off of us whether or not um, we have to be responsible for determining who gets to wear a mask and who doesn't wear a mask. By saying that the masks are required, 
there's a there's the line and then we have the health policy exception um, breaks aren't going to all be taken in the room and we teachers have already talked about this no, everyone in the room is not going to take off their mask in the room you know there's a chance to go to the bathroom two or three at a time take your mask off to go down the hall and come back things like that but it's harder to manage who should be wearing a mask and who shouldn't when it's not mandatory because we get lists of people who have medical issues and we'll know those kids and kids will just accept that they just do I, I was just coming again with the existing policy I was just I had envisioned a situation you know much like any other policy that you would have had as a student to where you know when you walk into that classroom that a teacher has a certain expectation whatever that may be um, and that allowing teachers the flexibility to implement that as yeah. they saw fit was, was adequate as far as the math goes. I, I understand. Especially I understand. given, and, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt, okay. especially given that we've, we've taken one solid mitigation strategy in socially distancing the classrooms. Uh, and as Bert alluded to earlier, even as adults, we all understand that wearing a mask for a six or eight hour stretch is not always the most comfortable, I mean, most comfortable thing, even for adults who may fully understand all of the reasons that we have behind it, but it's still, uh, it's distracting at worst, maybe, or it had a, had a minimum sometimes. And you, you, you will create the situation also where, uh, regardless, uh, actually, whether it's option one or option two, whether what we decided, they go to Ms. Hale's class and she's a, a proponent of the mask and she's like, you're going to wear your mask in my classroom, just no, no question. And they leave that block and they go to the next day to Ms. Zeke's class and everybody's like, ooh, we're going to Zeke's class, we can take our mask off. So. That, that could be a scenario that gets created too, where you don't have a staff member that is on board. adhering. Mm -hmm. And then you have, have parents, whether they agree or disagree, then we're creating that situation too. Not that I'm saying that, I'm just saying so we're prepared. Right, for we're prepared. It. right. That's it, not yeah. that that's gonna happen or one's gonna take whatever stance. We just need to be prepared because that's a situation that Unfortunately, that it's and, also a call. And, and let's just take it one step further. I'll, if you use Miss Zeke again, what? Let's suppose Miss Zeke was one of those teachers that didn't require a mask, and that's where the classroom outbreak took place, and that's where the COVID-19 case right. took place. They would say to us, "Well, you didn't do what you should do as a school division to keep those kids safe." That worries me a lot. Uh, I hope it doesn't happen, but it could, and and I feel like, uh, honestly, I feel like no matter how we say recommend, require, or mandate, we've got to be prepared for that one case that could happen that said we did not do everything that we could do to keep everyone safe. That's that's a point I'm coming across from as well. well um, I think there's an issue of whose name's first on the lawsuit that follows that. <laughs> Is it my name and then your name and then their names, or do you all get the first do on that <laughs> document? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 think I just this is a valid point. You know? given, yeah. given that we are in Wild West territory in, with regard to COVID nineteen litigation, I, I mean we could sit here and try. To we we could. The next yeah, and, and I, I yeah, the yeah. and and I, I really am not concerned about litigation. I'm concerned about people catching COVID-19. <laughs> that that's my one that's big concern great. right now. Sally, oh, Sally, Could yeah. I have yes, this is Sally Wolf, our school nurse. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I have learned, and my thoughts and feelings about this has evolved and has ultimately changed. Um, one of the speakers that we talk to frequently from the Virginia Department of Health, Joanna Pitt, she always puts things in the perspective of what's good, what's better, and what's best. Um, good is social distance, would be social distancing. Better would be a mask at intervals with the social distancing. But the best thing we could do for our children and to possibly prevent a case of COVID-19 is to wear the mask at all times as well as social distance. 
I was going to say one of those documents you sent us said that. It said that. It said that the best case scenario. So, do we feel like there needs to be anything added? I think so. Or about the wording change mm -hmm. before we move yeah. on it? I think we do. I mean, honestly, the, the blanket nature of it, if, if we think that allowing breaks or if that's going to be handled at the school level by the principals, then uh, something should be in there. I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't, first of all, I want the policy to be clear. Um, mm -hmm. if, if that is going to include a measure of flexibility at the school level, then I think it, it, it probably needs to be spelled out as clearly as we can because we don't want people confused, especially with regard to mask breaks, where they may occur. Um, no, that's, that's, you don't want to rewrite the Constitution on something like that, but it, it, but the it least, should be. The least amount of confusion needs, is yeah. probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely needs to be in the letter. It does. And I personally, when I was thinking about breaks, I wasn't thinking about in the classroom. I was thinking more or less. Like going to the bathroom? Yes, or? definitely. Okay. Definitely. But it needs to Once be stated lunch. there. I mean, not when they're eating. Yeah. It, it needs to be stated there because right now, you just feel so confined in what we see before us. So before... Like like the um Jonathan said, it needs to be straightforward, you know, no confusion. And I think that will help with some of the other things that we have talked about. Right. And and I didn't mean to add another uh, layer to this, but if you look at all three schools in that age group or grade groups, they're going at different lengths of time mm -hmm. throughout the day mm -hmm. and so many days per week this week mm -hmm. and the following so that's something too to consider because these kids are there every day these kids are there every other week and these kids are there for three hours per day mm -hmm. four days a week um, so the expectation of each of those different groups is a little bit different you, one group might say, well, I don't have it too bad. That's not bad. I can accept mm -hmm. that. And you have another group that's like, well, I'm here all day. Um, and again, I'm not advocating one right. side or the other. I'm just right. saying we have to be prepared. Ms. Hale. I did a lot of work on that policy, so I'll speak to it for a second. Um, I think the best way to do it is to let the building principals decide you're going to get two breaks a day or three breaks, mm -hmm. whatever it is based on how long you're in the building, mm -hmm. you space it out, and you delineate when can you have your mask off, where are you when you have your mask off, and you say, these are the times you can have your mask off, and the principal tells it, those teachers, this will be allowed, this will not be allowed, and these are the times it can happen, and these are the times it cannot happen, and these are the situations it could happen, and, and so forth. I think, um, I think we always have to put health first, I think the time that we don't put health first, we've sent a really bad message to the community, to our students, to our staff, to our teachers, and to everyone. And I just, I'm a medical professional and a teacher. So I'm speaking on both, and I'm a parent. I've got that, that third grader, that fifth grader, that kindergartner, that first grader that you were talking about. And they know you're doing this not for yourself, you're doing this for someone else. And I, I Ms. Hale, I'll agree with you. I'm just saying, you need to put that verbiage in there. Right. And you're and right, the you principles. Say, if you say, yeah. we will allow Definitely. said number of breaks during the day, and this will be delineated by the principles of each building. Or Definitely. Something. I think that's a, Definitely. a good way to say The only thing that I would caution us against, though, is creating a three-quarter page, one-page document that we're expecting children to, to know, uh, or, or providing such variation there, either from building to building or whatever, that it becomes somewhat confusing on enforcement. Uh, and I agree with you. Right. I, I really do. But there again, teachers are key. You know, teachers are key. How you present that information. Um, if I'm over in the elementary school, my kids not going to know about the high school. <laughs> they really yeah. aren't. So everyone's going to follow the same 
protocol. But well, right. to, to Ms. Hale's point, though, I mean, each principal would develop their own right. you know, protocol mm -hmm. uh, of the winds and the wares. Yes. And the, the, winds, winds, and the winds and the wares, and I can, uh, you know, might be might be slightly overblown, but I could I could see that document and I growing think, to the point. To and where I think to the individuals or the parents mm -hmm. or students that oppose it, that would be easier for them. That's what be more accepted. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's the more, the That's more really straight good. line and straightforward so. your policy, yeah. the, the better it is able to be a, both uh, abided by and enforced. And that's sort of what um, I'm a little concerned about is that the more layers that we right. add to this, that's the more the more ways that it can be lawyered against. Right. Just that keep way. it simple. <laughs> and I think they will. Ms. Hunter. I just wanted to say, um, I understand both sides, but I think kids are resilient and they'll do whatever they're mm -hmm. told. Mm -hmm. And then in that policy also we're going to have, and if it is not done, you're going to have the steps in it, well. you know, a warning or I think that would be up to the principal as well. But I do, um, but anyway, I, I do believe that. I wanted to know, like, if visitors come, whatever policy we take, no. are we going to say yes. all visitors must yes. wear a mask? Yes, 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 yes. 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 Temperature checks, entrance, mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. And whenever possible for the majority of the uh, encounters with the public, there will be no public in the building. If a parent needs to pick up a child that might be sick for whatever reason, our plan is to have that child escorted to the parent wherever that parent may be, not enter the building. If a parent needs to enter the building to talk to the school nurse, they will make an appointment and they will be temperature checked and all those things. There will be screening. If a worker comes in, and we've had workers come in here and other buildings, they have their temperatures taken, they have a screening to do, we have a record of everybody, and we expect everyone to follow the mask policy. Right. So, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel like masks should be all the time, but I do want to say, we have a situation where it's mouth to mouth. Like Autumn Anderson had to give CPR and mouth to mouth to the little girl. <coughs> yes, ma'am. I'm going to let Sally answer that when you're finished. Okay. No, I mean, I'm just curious. We, we don't want this <coughs> to be prolonged because, you know, after you start reading okay. half a sheet, you lose interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's some things I think. And you, that you do CPR. The mask would have to come on for that situation. That's life or death. Um, anytime there's an immediate threat to life. Mask. Mm -hmm. so I think you would handle the situation um, just as you normally would. Right. And then, okay, yeah, now I just want to make so sure that was open. When exigent circumstances present themselves, um, a specific type of person typically rises to the occasion mm -hmm. uh, to help solve that situation or help whatever individual is in <coughs> And they don't care, not that they don't care about the consequences, but what they're doing is they're putting somebody else's life in front of theirs. Um, so if those exigent circumstances do exist, I'm sure that uh, our staff or uh, other individuals will put their training, uh, will revert to their training and do whatever it takes to preserve life or, no, I just you know, yeah. yeah. And so, and they would do that regardless of the situation. Right. So, like, um, yes. and I think there will probably be instances where there's exigent circumstances, may not severe, you know, life-threatening, that you will see the removal of the mask has to take place. Um, but it's, you can articulate why that would have to happen. Um, whether it's a discipline thing or a, whatever it is, um, those situations are going to present themselves. You, even though this would be in place, I don't think every situation is going to, you know, fall into that. So you'll, you'll have that. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to have to be understanding and accepting of that if this is the route that we take. So, Ms. Wolf, Ms. Sally, would you like to say anything about emergency situations, I, nurses' clinic? And what 
emergency situations and I did not hear the total question. Just about should there be an emergency situation and uh, CPR mouth to mouth or something have to be done. Um, you would take all the necessary precautions as a school nurse, correct, if that situation arose? Exactly, and part of that would include uh, probably getting, see if we could get an AMBU bag, which means that you don't necessarily have to uh, do mouth to mouth. You can, you can do the uh, respirations with this bag that you squeeze. And, and we have all of those things in our clinic, correct? I, do, I am not sure right offhand if we have an AMBU bag, um, but we can get one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, we'll, we'll check on that piece of uh, needed medical uh, equipment. A lot of the recommendations now for, for, gen, for the general public and stuff are hands-only CPR. Yes. Um, but, but again, like whoever was talking there, um, come right down to it. You're, as a healthcare professional, you're going to do what you have to do when you have to do it. Correct. Yes, that was Mr. Baker and, and Mrs. Hale also mentioned some of those things as well. So thank you, Ms. Wolf. So I really think the only thing we need to decide is. <laughs> Um, to Ms. Hale's point, what the building administrators will have to say as far as when the breaks, the when, the where, and the why, uh, those it's possible um, safety situations for whatever uh, incident may occur, that kind of thing. So, um, and they're really, if you look at the two options, it's a more robust version of that lesser option because you're going to include the brakes in there. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, mm -hmm. you know, they have the opportunity to get those brakes, and but you still have the ability to say mm -hmm. you're wearing the mask. So would you like us to bring back something next week? Is that what you're proposing? Uh, I'm thinking that would be good. Well, we have, what, yeah. Unless it's with the understanding that that's the case. I mean, um, you're you're always 17th right now. I think so. I think there's a uh, there's a conversation that that well we need to be honest about the fact that there is a health uh, definite health benefit to the mitigation of the spread of disease wearing masks, but we should not kid ourselves that this has not become a contentious subject outside of this boardroom. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why, um, like we have talked about before, that you're going to get pushed back on this. No, somebody somewhere is going to be unhappy, which is one of the reasons why I think it's critical for us to have a as simple and straightforward mm -hmm. policy on this as we can because if you leave a lot of places for question marks to pop up they will pop up well i'm just going to say that when the schools went through the whole era and continues to go through the era of school shootings and when we first went through training about how to best protect our children in our classrooms one of the most contentious parts of that was dress code because at that time, if you remember when Columbine happened, those young men were wearing long trench coats. It was the trend at the time. From the baggy clothes, to wearing uh, hoodies, all of that. And we weathered that storm as well as educators. And I have the complete faith that our staff can teach our children in the same manner about this issue. Not all parents believed that we should tell their children what they could and could not wear to school as they do now believe that we should and should not make their kids wear a mask. But we are in a public situation in which we have to protect everybody. Think about this, the long-term effect of what could occur. Okay? 
A child comes in, asymptomatic, not wearing a mask. The teacher contracts it. She's got to be out for 14 days, even if she doesn't contract it, because that kid is identified as COVID-19. She doesn't have but 10 sick days, because she's a young teacher with children of her own, and she's carried that home. Now, I know I'm making a like a startling example here. But that's exactly the reason why I feel like we should wear masks. Why put ourselves in any situation in which we could have that happen for a staff member or for a student? My goodness, this is my 30th year teaching. I don't want my career to end knowing that one of my students died because they weren't wearing a mask, we didn't push wearing masks, and this, this awful disease took their life. I don't want that. No teacher does. Am I right, ladies? You're right, and that's one of the I things mean, you that can't, you said. You cannot understand. They become you, part of you. You know, I always tell my kids, I may not remember your name, but I'm going to remember your face. I'm going to know that you were my kid. And I don't think that any of us want to carry that into our retirement years. Absolutely not. And I would say it's, it's a conversation that is being had in society at large about the mitigation strategies, what's effective. Um, it, there's been an entire series of evolutions since this all began, and I think that's part of what makes it, um, in, in some cases contentious because we, we have had some conflicting um, you know advice at different points so as we did with the school shooter pro right? right am I right bird we and went through a whole adjustment of what was right what was wrong whether to put the blinds down or leave the blinds up whether to turn your light well, off or leave your light on the, the essentially the infancy stage of this is yes. who we all have been dealing with this right. this morning, mm -hmm. literally you know we had very little warning prior to and everything just stopped for us so we're still very early on and i don't think there's anybody here that is discounting the um the purpose of the mask and what safety level it applies to the, you know what we're trying to accomplish here so um i just think you know like Ms. Hale said you know are the building administrators going to have any say in there do we need to add any verbiage so that is covered yes. and then we can move forward if not you know if, if we don't want to do that or and that's understood like Jonathan said you don't want to have it really layered because then you're going to have them poking holes in it at that point so it does need to be simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, even if it's just one sentence, mm -hmm. you don't have to explain. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to explain why you're doing yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. You can just say, hey, this is what yeah. we're doing. Mm -hmm. right. We're going to require a mask yeah. and there will be breaks. And then you can always say, still there's the option. If your child cannot do this, there's virtual. I mean, the yeah. option is there. Still there. So just one sentence? Um, like I said, it's simple and straightforward. And one sentence would, would cover that for sure. Are we going to talk about the discipline? I mean, because you mentioned it, Melinda. I, I, we brought it up. We talked about it. We discussed how yes. difficult it was going to be. Definitely. Um, and, and I mean, you're going to have to be pretty yeah. big. But well, the student, the student I knows probably would. that they can't change to virtual until the end of the nine weeks. Definitely. Then they have a. I, I think you can change if a, you cannot come back from virtual right. until. But you could change if it was a discipline situation and go to virtual if that was what was needed because a student just could not comply with uh, the expectation to keep that mask, uh, fa that face covering on. I think one of our administrators brought that up when I met yes. with you all. Yes, mm -hmm. they did. 
They did. Um, and our principals want to do what's best for all. Mrs. Morgan was very, very vocal in the task force that she's concerned about the little ones. Um, but she knows that they can learn and that they, they can do what they need to do. Mr. Bennett's very, very concerned about um, that if they won't do what's asked, that maybe they not maybe they need to do virtual learning if they cannot keep that expectation and Mr. Cantrell is very very aware that there are students at the high school level that may not be compliant with the policy but I think we just need to have something in place before September the 9th and families need to know sooner than later yes. in my is my belief that that's the route we're going to go and I think our staff is still very anxious on that staff survey when you you look at how do you feel from a one to a five most of, about returning to school most of our staff feels very anxious about returning to school. Now some of that might be because of the virtual learning component, but I think most of it's about the COVID-19 and the, and the face coverings in the classroom. So we have a lot to look at to try to make this a very positive opening for all. We've been out of school since March. We all know that the best place for our students to be is in school if that's where the family wants them to be. But there's also a give and take on our family side. If they want to come to school, they've got to meet us halfway. Uh, and help us keep their child safe, everyone else's child safe, and our staff safe and healthy. So there's no easy answer to any, any of this, but we do have to be proactive and make the right decision um, at this point in time. I, I had a somewhat unrelated, I mean, related to COVID-19 in our faculty, but are we, we moving on from this? And Something well, I, I just need to know how to proceed. To write one statement and let you all see it, bring it back next week. We have agreed to meet every week until school opens because we uh, there are other decisions that could. This is a ever evolving situation. We just need to stay on top of what's happening in our community. So we start work Monday. Right. I mean, are we then? not asking faculty and staff and all employees to wear masks? That was my intention, so I guess we need to have a decision tonight. Well, could we not include the verbiage and everything and you just um, send it to us tomorrow and we yes. take a vote like we've done in the how do you all feel about that, or you want to go ahead and Just do it tonight? Or we're here, mm -hmm. all right? Identify what it is that you want to put in there, yes. and let's just go ahead and do it because you're not going to have, um, like I said before, you're okay. going to have, and Jonathan said too, you're going to push back on either side. Yeah. Um, so, and then like Miss Wolf said. You have the good, better, best. So, regardless of where you stand on it, right? Just get it done. And whether you want to make it one statement, you want to scratch through that and say masks will be mandatory at all times, with the exception of the building administrators uh, designated breaks. Uh, the only uh, breaks. mask breaks at the discretion of the building administrator is probably just about, add one sentence. It's <laughs> probably about as straightforward as you could possibly word. You, you're going to have to. I have identified some things. We're going to have to talk you're, about the break, the building principal, and the discipline. You're, you're identifying in the middle of the document. You're identifying the exceptions. So really. The big one that would apply to most situations is anyone with a severe medical condition that may affect breathing. So we've identified that's going to be case by case, simple enough. But down at the very bottom, it says definitively, uh, we'll be required to wear face covering slash mask while on the bus and at school. So I think if you're going to allow exceptions to that, you should at least spell out what those exceptions will be and who they will be decided by. So in the, um, you're saying at the end? Well, that's, the that's, that's where it makes the definitive right. statement so that it will be required. So. so you could say that 
Building principals will have the discretion to initiate mask breaks. Mm -hmm. Students who feel, or students and families who feel they cannot comply should consider virtual learning. Yeah. I, I don't really want to throw that virtual learning option out there yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really, I really don't. Well, but well, but this, is, this, is, this is what I, this is what okay. I wrote. There'll be face covering breaks designated by the principal, uh, school level. Discipline will be uh, considered by each building principal. That sentence could be become, become before that last paragraph. Um, just to be clear that the requirement is there, but that we also understand that there might be the need for for breaks. But uh, this this is just. Um, I'm not good with words. I'm too wordy, so I don't know what else, how else to say it. Honestly. Um, that is about as straight, I mean, I, 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 I like whatever that. adjustments you'd like, but that is, that was taken from a state governor's mask mandate for the whole state. I used it on purpose because I felt like if I can't, you know, if I use something from the governor for the entire state, at least I'm in the ballpark. And then I've mm -hmm. adopted it and made it ours and, you know. And that's so, great. So we can add or change or eliminate mm -hmm. whatever you'd like for me to do. I'm, I'm happy to do that. So, mm -hmm. I think the you were fine. You were on Okay. I, I agree. I agree. And, and you said something, um, Ms. Preston, about deciding on discipline, et cetera. So discipline um, issues are handled differently at different levels. Mm -hmm. uh, it's different at the high school than it is there. Mm -hmm. So you would not discipline a uh, tenth grader the same as you would right. the third mm -hmm. grader. Right. Or so as so a four-year-old. Correct. And so that that administrator, that, that principal is going to have to um, deal with those situations differently. So I don't know necessarily if you want to outline it as much as you would say, we, we don't want to have to discipline for it. Right. Um, and as Mrs. Eeks brought out, it's a, a teaching mm -hmm. uh, opportunity as well. Um, so, you know, if you have the kid that always comes up from the new building to the, to the old building, and Mr. Jones is standing there and he's got to say, put on your mask. You have somebody there reminding you, put on your mask. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Okay. And if that individual or that teacher or administrator or whatever sees that it's continually a thing, then that, hey, look, there's a policy in place. Your parents agree to it. This is what we're going to do. I need you to do it. Come on, man. All right. Mm -hmm. This is why we're doing it. And, and I think it would be as simple as that. If, and if a person becomes a discipline issue because of the mask mm -hmm. you got to deal with the discipline issue exactly. not necessarily the mask itself mm -hmm. if they're continually becoming a disruption and they're using a mask as a vehicle to do it they would have found any way to be a disruption yeah, and they right. would have found any way to be a discipline issue all this does is provide them oh he has a different book bag than me he has a different pair of shoes than me you know that that kind of thing mm -hmm. so i would think you would maybe, I don't think we can outline. Well, Melinda those. did it very well. Read what you had at the end. But I understand your point, and it's well taken. Well, I just said there will be face covering breaks designated by the principal. I was going to add, uh, according to the developmental age of the student, because that's what, and the discipline will also uh, be um, in a line, in a line with the developmental age of the student because and that consequences instead yeah. of discipline yeah consequences because it's not always discipline it's just a consequence it's something and really it's a consequence and it does come off more of like you know you're you're just handing down down this decree when you say discipline um, consequences okay. which we're trying to make our students understand every action has consequences. So mm -hmm. that would be. We already deal with this all day long with hats. Mm -hmm. It's no different. I don't think. I don't think it's any different than what we deal with. Well, hats. they want to wear a hat, so. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the same. It's the For same them, thing, yeah. right? You know, they see you and they go, "Oh, sorry." Yeah. You know, it's the same. And they'll thing. probably be the same. They'll, it will. They'll, cut, they'll turn the corner in the hall, and they'll see you standing there, like, "No, slip their mask." Mm -hmm. I do it at work all the time. I am the worst defender. I get out of my car and I leave my mask in the car. I go in the building and I'm like, turn around, I gotta go back and get my mask. 
I leave my office to go around to the restroom and I forget my mask. And somebody says, dude, where's your mask? It happens to me all day, every day. I am an adult, 44 years old, and I still have the same problems that they're gonna have in school. So we really cannot, mm -hmm. you know, hand down that punishment. Mm -hmm. um, so. We just gotta work together. Yeah. Well, that's you have that's to what we tell them. I'll make yeah. a motion that we adopt this Wait, policy. Hold on for just one Go. minute. Jonathan, you have oh. any other concerns? Just making sure. Because we want to be prepared and address right. everything. Just making sure. We can discuss the motion, you know. Right. After it's made. It's done, a motion yeah. is made oh. and second. Then we discuss. Okay. okay. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the mask policy as written with the additions that Mrs. Uh, Snee Johnson has indicated she would make. That, that's what I was going to ask if you were going to add those okay. in the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Oh. Well, I mean, like I said, it's, it's the most clear-cut policy that you can muster. Um, and we can, we can cross our fingers and hope that that's the best way forward. Um, as to my point earlier about you're not going to have people that's happy with with anything that you do, right, or everything that you do, um, and we all realize that. All right, as successful adults, we understand that. So we want you to understand that you may be dealing with some of that uh, positive or negative feedback, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there will be uh, a lot of social media discussion about it too. Um, don't read the comments. That's the only thing I can tell you. Don't read the comments. I don't even okay? look at it. So, um, and something that I have done since I've been on this board, it, um, I know, I understand what the greater good is. I don't always have to agree with something to understand that it's the best for everybody. I was raised a certain way, just like everybody else was. You have your own internal belief system. You feel a certain way. It's just like politics. You lean left, you lean right. So you don't always have to agree to understand that it's the best decision to make for everyone involved. And can, can I just throw in, it was even a, an Aunt Mary column about face coverings, uh, this pa Saturday's paper, I don't know mm -hmm. who, but it, mm -hmm. it's out there, so, mm -hmm. you know, everyone has their own thoughts, good or bad, about the whole concern. Okay. So, Ms. Preston, you have a motion and a second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. okay. 